Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is Amy from With Love by Amy. And today we are making a card to celebrate Zoo Lovers Day. It's an obscure holiday that is celebrated on April 8th every year to basically draw attention to um, the preservation that is zoos, basically, of animals that could become extinct. And it just, you know, it's just another fun, ex obscure holiday that we're celebrating and trying to bring more attention to because, you know, these are fun days to draw attention to. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to start off by stamping the elephant. This is from the Zoo Babies stamp set from Stampin' Up! from a long time ago. And I know it's um, a discontinued stamp set, so I have linked a stamp set from Lawn Fawn that's still available that would work really well for this kind of technique. So... In order to make sure that I'm, because these aren't clear stamps, they're red rubber, so in order to make sure that they're lining up properly, what I'm doing is I am I stamped the first one, the elephant, and then I put the, um, the grid mat, the uh, transparency grid mat, down over my card panel, and I put a little bit of ink on the feet of the next animal, which was the rhino, and I stamped the feet in green. And I just wanted to make sure that they like lined up and actually touched the back of the elephant because I've made this card in the past and I um, didn't do such a hot job of it. <laughs> it's probably on my Instagram somewhere or maybe I didn't even share it. I don't know. But it didn't turn out as great because I didn't use the grid transparency. So um, once I get the stamp positioned properly where I want it, I will remove the transparency and then stamp the animal down in the ink that I wanted. And I am using Catherine Pooler, uh, the party collection inks. And so the next animal we're going to do is we're going to do the lion. So same, same idea. We're going to stamp his little feet on the grid transparency, see if he's in the right spot. And sometime, you know, I just wanted to make sure that he touched the rhino's back. So I am going to adjust him ever so slightly. And then I'm going to re-ink the stamp and stamp it down in its entirety on the card panel. And the card panel itself, I did um, cut it out with the inside out stitched rectangles from Lawn Fawn. And I will link those in the description box below as well. This pro the process is very much repetition because I'm doing the same exact thing with each animal and the zebra's going to go next. And I just think these animals are adorable. And just, you know, the way that the card ended up lining up and spacing out, totally by coincidence. I didn't plan that. It just kind of happened. So that was pretty cool. So we're doing the zebra. I wanted to, of course, fit as many animals as I could on the card and I did find inspiration for this card on Pinterest and if I can find the pin again because like I said the first time I made this card was years and years ago so if I can find the pin again I will um, tag the creator of the original card in this card because I don't I don't know how she made it I just found the picture and thought it was cute and I was like oh I could do that so this is me doing my best shot with this <laughs> um the black ink I did use, um, I think that's the Gina K ink, the Obsidian Black Gina K ink. I think it's the, yeah, it's the Amalgam, Amalgam ink from Gina K. And after we, do, yep, there we go. We're going to put it away. And I am cleaning off my stamps with my tidy towel. Um, I keep my tidy towel in a salt cellar and I keep it damp in there. That thing stays damp for so long in there. It's amazing. Seriously, I need to do like some little time-lapse review or something of that salt cellar thing because it's literally the best thing Be for keeping my tidy towel damp so that I can craft whenever I want. I seriously have some blockages when it comes to things that stand in my way when I want to craft. Like if the tidy towel was not damp and ready to go, I might just be like, mm, not going to clean up after myself. I mean, let's be honest, I do skip cleaning up after myself quite frequently just because, you know, I have kids and I'm a crafter who's messy. But, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I just stop when I'm like, I get a roadblock and I stop. Does anybody else seem to have that issue where they're just like impaired by something that seems completely unreasonable? Yeah, that's me. 
something as minor as like, oh, I have to get my tidy towel wet again, derails my plans. <laughs> and I know, yes, it's very ridiculous, but it is what it is. All right, so now we're putting the little birdie on there. I believe that's a toucan. I wish I would have done that a little bit differently. I thought about coloring the spaces in his beak different colors, but I didn't, so. Um, all right, so we're just making sure that the little toucan is in the right spot. It was a little struggle to get him in the right spot so he looked like he was actually standing on that monkey's head. And if you hear a bunch of noise in the background, it's really, really windy here in Oklahoma today. Yeah, crazy, crazy windy. A nice day, but windy, windy, windy. So yeah, it sounds like my house is gonna blow away. It's not a tornado though. No risk of tornadoes today. So yeah. All right, little birdie's legs are finally in the right spot, so I'm gonna wipe that off. And now we're gonna stamp on the cardstock. I love these Catherine Pooler inks. Like the colors are so vibrant. And actually I wasn't, before I got these inks, I wasn't a huge fan of the foam ink pads but these are so nice like I don't know the ones that I had previously I was not a huge fan of um, but we're gonna take a scrap of white cardstock here and we're gonna stamp this sentiment the banner sentiment onto the piece of white cardstock and I'm also going to stamp it in blue and I wasn't sure what color I wanted to use so I just saved the other one in my sentiment bucket that you saw there a second ago that thing comes in handy so much I honestly stamp extra sentiments on purpose sometimes just so that I can restock that bucket because I use it a lot. I tend to keep unsentimented, though that's a hard word to say, unsentimented sentimented cards on my desk or in my collection sometimes so that I can just give them to the appropriate person and add a sentiment. Because you never know when you're going to need a birthday card versus just a hey how you doing type of card or something. So just keeping the cards plain helps me out. And But this one, I'm fairly confident we're going to go to kid birthday parties soon. So this one will come in handy because my kids always get invited to stuff. Well, here's the finished product. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps me out. Thank you so much. And can't wait to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.